Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. Now I do understand having said that that uh, stress levels may be very high and you guys, you know, may be thinking that, you know, that th maybe this is something that I need to do. Maybe maybe I should solve another past paper. Maybe I should watch this video. But my advice to you would be that at this point you're more likely to make matters worse than better. So if let's say there's a very small or very specific concept that you're struggling to uh, struggling at, uh, you're you basically can't understand or you're struggling with, then you're you're very welcome to watch a video. But at this point, do not put yourself in a position where you know you're like, okay, let me attempt another past paper. Let's see what score I get. So that's not a good thing to do. In this video, inshallah, I'll just be giving you guys some simple tips and tricks, uh, what to do before the exam, during the exam, and after the exam. Uh, but before I start, I would encourage you guys to quickly pause this video and make sure that you do a quick stationary check. You should have a pencil, scale, razor, sharpener, a protractor, basically your entire geometry box. And also to be on the safe side, uh, tracing paper, obviously don't take your calculator because it's, it's a non-calculator exam. And uh, this is uh, video obviously is for O-level and IGCSC students both who have their exam tomorrow. Okay, so that's uh, make sure that you do a quick check and make sure that you're well equipped for tomorrow's exam. Okay, now secondly, I would advise you to sort of disconnect yourself. Now, I know it's, it may be contradicting. Uh, yeah, like you're watching this video and I'm telling you to disconnect yourself, but disconnect yourself from social media, disconnect yourself from, you know, discussing about what's going to happen in tomorrow's exam, whether it's going to be easy, difficult, threshold, uh, is so-and-so topic expected, should I do so-and-so topics, that's obviously not a good thing to do, especially a day before the exam, so I wouldn't advise you to do that, and secondly, make sure that you get enough sleep, okay, so this, today, you should just be relaxing and make sure that you get a good night's sleep, why? Because honestly, you don't want to learn this lesson the hard way. You don't want to uh, sit in the exam and not be able to answer a question because not because you're unaware of the concept, but because you are you just don't have a fully functioning brain. And uh, a lot of students, I hope I'm wrong this time, but a lot of students reach out to me after the exams telling me that, sir, you know what, I was unable to solve so and so question, but now it makes sense to me. So that basically happens if you're not well slept. OK, so you got you need a good night's sleep. Uh, make sure that you have a healthy breakfast. Uh, if that's something that you're used to, don't do something that's out of routine. Obviously, I don't recommend that. Uh, make sure that you stay hydrated. It's very hot. And uh, honestly, hats off to you guys. To every student who has their, has to give exams this season, when it's unbearably hot. And I know sometimes the centers don't have fully uh, functioning air conditions. Also, some don't have them at all. So honestly, hats off to you guys. You guys have my respect. But just make sure that you stay hydrated. You don't want to um, all of a sudden uh, compromise your health so god forbid if that happens obviously you will end up compromising your rest of the papers as well okay now once you have the paper now let me tell you exam anxiety all that pressure that you feel before starting the paper is real and you're not alone okay so no matter how well prepared you are don't think that you're feeling that because you're not well prepared but no matter how well prepared you are there's always that fear of the unknown so i want to acknowledge that it's it's something that everyone all of us go through and uh, it's real basically but the thing is so what you have to do is you have to you have to control your stress you have to bring your stress will come down once your confidence level goes up and how will your confidence level go up i'm reading from points okay in case you're wondering why i'm not looking in the camera so your confidence level will go up once you start with the questions that you already know you know there are a lot of questions that don't require you to think a lot of questions where you don't have to uh, use some complicated formulas just some calculations just a simple formula will do the work. So for example, I made a list also. It's not an exhaustive list. There may be some questions which I've missed, so feel free to add. Uh, like for example, you have questions of decimal multiplication fractions. You know, you have to add, subtract fractions. Uh, you have board mass related questions. You have a question which is very common, that is you have to arrange numbers in ascending order. Okay, recurring decimal to fraction, indices in standard form, very straightforward question. There's no thinking required, no reading required. Just read the question and solve, that's it. Uh, indices in standard form, thirds, something that's recently been added in the syllabus. Uh, basic algebraic manipulation, you know, when you have two fractions, you're supposed to add them or maybe you're supposed to expand, simplify, factorize, stuff like that. Uh, polygons, if it's a straightforward question, I'd advise you to do it immediately. If not, then leave it for later. Estimation and approximations, pretty straightforward questions. And also, as you're solving these questions, remember to check as you go along because you will not have time towards the end. I mean, there's no guarantee. You don't want to be in a position where you've solved the paper and in the end you realize that you haven't left yourself enough time. So check as you go along. And uh, if you have a habit of making silly errors, we all do. You know, even when I'm solving past papers live, you guys must have seen that I've made multi multiple silly errors. But, you know, I have the while I'm doing 
uh, when I'm doing a live stream, I have a benefit of you guys pointing it out. So I'm a little relaxed. But if I were doing an exam, I'd be 10 times more careful. I'd keep reminding myself of the errors that I've made in the past. And I'd be 10 times more careful so I don't repeat them. Okay. Now, revise all the relevant conversions, you know, all the conversions related to length, area, volume, obviously that's important. Make sure that you revise them before the day of the exam. And uh, just generally watch out for a few things. Uh, like for example, sometimes this usually happens in word problems. We work out something, but that isn't what the question wants. However, you use that to get to, to answer what the question wants, okay? Like in word problems, maybe you've worked out the value of x and what you're supposed to give is something that's dependent on x, but not x in itself. Also watch out for if you have transformation and there's a negative or a scale factor that's less than one, make sure that you identify the object clearly, the image clearly, the word, uh, the, the shape after the word onto is basically the image. And also watch out for negative signs when expanding brackets, just watch out for negative signs irrespective. You know, that's, that's a place where I've read, read multiple times in the exam report that students make errors. Also watch out for the inequality sign and the kind of line that you have to draw, okay? So if the question says uh, inside the region, that means you will, and the lines that are given to you are solid, so that means you will uh, use either greater than sign or, or lesser than sign. We solved a question very recently. And if the question says greater than equal to, then you will draw a solid line. However, if the question says greater than and no graph is given, you're supposed to make the graph, then you will draw a dotted line, okay? So just watch out for that. And uh, after, also watch, use a pencil to draw and annotate on the diagrams given in the question paper. So for example, if you're using, if you're solving a question related to circle properties and you have to annotate on the diagram, maybe you have to mark a certain angle, maybe you have to draw a certain line to find the bearing or whatever, you know. So feel free to annotate on the question paper and do it using a pencil. Okay, I've read this time and again in the exam report that they say that students who make a rough sketch or annotate on the diagram or scribble on the diagram, they encourage it and they say that students who do it are better able to understand the question and are also able to answer it correctly also. Okay, also remember bearing, it should be given correct to three digits, like before the decimal, you gotta have three digits, so watch out for that. Uh, sometimes circle properties are not so clear to identify, so change the order. So for example, if you're solving a question of circle properties, it may not be possible for you to do it in a way where you look at the question and be able to think of a circle property. No, sometimes you have to think of a circle property and try and fit that circle property into that question. Okay, so just change the order. And this thing, I've recommended this to a lot of students. It has done wonders for them and for you also, inshallah, it's going to do, uh, it's going to help you. Okay, also when it comes to finding area or perimeter of the shaded region, it's important to plan your answer. So any question which is of three, four, five marks, you will have to plan, why? Because it's not possible that you will get five marks just for the final answer. Obviously that's not how it works. However, it's a one, if it's a one mark question, no need to show your working. Although if that working is necessary for you, to uh, get to the right answer, if that working is important for you to make sure that you don't end up making an error, then do as many working as, as much working as possible and do it on the question paper. Don't do any working in pencil. Uh, I was going to mention that, that please don't make the mistake of solving the paper in pencil first and then thinking that you will have enough time to do it in pen. The examiners discourage that because the papers get scanned and when the papers get scanned, your handwriting, the intensity of the darkness goes down by 10%. So you don't want to do that. It gets very difficult for the examiner, okay? So remember, the examiner is not the kind of person who's gonna make an effort on your behalf. So you, like for example, your teacher may know that, okay, the student has understood this concept. So maybe this is what he or she meant. And you know, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. The examiner will not give you the benefit of the doubt. To the examiner, you're just a number. You're not a face, you're not a person, you're just a number. So think of it this way. Uh, by examiner, I mean checker, whoever is checking your paper. That the checker is just looking for an excuse to cut your marks and you have to make sure that you don't give the checker that excuse, okay? So start with the, do the paper with this mindset. Uh, whatever it is that you're thinking here, make sure that you translate it on the question paper because don't expect the, exa ex the checker to think on your behalf. Don't expect the checker to make any effort on your behalf, okay? Simple as that, okay? Now, uh, when it comes to, so plan your answer, that's my importance. For, for example, if you're finding out area or perimeter of a shaded region, then it's important that you identify what area you need to add or perhaps subtract or what lens it is that you need to add in order to get to the shaded region. So change the objective, you know, keep changing objectives. So for example, if the question says find this, then see what is it that you need to find what the question says, then focus on that. Then in order to find that, if you need something else, focus on that. So this is how you will be able to progress in questions that carry a lot of marks. And this is how inshallah you'll be able to solve them correctly also. Achha. Also be prepared, so be mentally prepared for one or two tricky questions, okay? 
So don't let that tricky question or don't let one or two difficult questions define your entire paper or bring you down. Leave them for the very end because once you start with some easy questions, your stress level will go down, your confidence level will go up, and then you will be in a better position to solve that. But if you cannot, just leave it for the very end. But be mentally prepared before starting the paper that there will be something that's going to challenge you at a very high level. And God forbid, God forbid, if you're unable to do it, it's not the end of the world, okay? So don't let that bring you down. Don't let that bring you in a state where you end up making, you end up making errors in other easy questions also. However, in these questions, some really challenging questions, the pattern that I've noticed is, the pattern that I've observed is that they're not very heavily reliant on a formula. They're not very heavily reliant on some, so, some usual uh, ways that we use to solve a question. They're basically relying on common sense, okay? And sometimes you have to just think outside the box. So what we're doing is when we're solving such questions is that we're just treating them like every other question. So if the conventional approach doesn't work, then what you want to do, what you want to do is you want to stop the formulas and you know the usual approach, the linear way of thinking approach cloud your thinking and just focus on the question. Just think of some very basic concepts to apply. Uh, just uh, try and be, uh, just think of it as if like, what if you were completely unaware of all the math concepts and then you read this question and you were given a task to solve it, how would you do it? So because sometimes that's, that's really the trick to solve such questions, but be mentally prepared for some difficult questions. Okay, now. Be careful when drawing graphs or reading graphs. Don't be too casual about it. Like for example, if something is 17.5, you better write it as 17.5. Don't feel free to round it off to 17 or 18. You don't want to lose marks. Okay, be careful about limits of accuracy. So for example, if the question is asking you for lower bound, that doesn't mean you just clearly take the lower bound of everything. See what it is that you're, so what, how is it that you will get what the question's asking for? If there are two values that you have to add, there's a rule for that. If there are, is there a value th that you have to subtract from a certain value, there's a rule for that. So think, think how you can maximize a certain value, think how you can minimize a certain value, and then solve this, solve the question, okay? And also, most importantly, just, Try and make sense of your answer, okay? Just make sure that if you're solving a question, so for example, if let's say you worked out uh, probability and if your answer is turned, coming out to be negative, that shouldn't make sense. If your answer turns out to be more than one, shouldn't make sense. If the line is upward sloping and your gradient turns out to be negative, shouldn't make sense to you. So all throughout the paper, just remember that you're making sense of each and every answer before you move on. Okay, now. If you get something wrong, don't overwrite it. Simply cross it out and do it again, okay? Don't overwrite it. Again, don't expect the examiner to put in any effort on your behalf. They have checker. They have thousands, hundreds and thousands of copies to check, so they're not going to make any effort on your behalf. Uh, before you start a question, make sure that you look at the amount of space and use it efficiently, okay? Don't, uh, you don't want to reach a point where you're like, okay, you've used so much space and you have, there's still a lot of, a lot of uh, working left to be done, so just make sure that you're conscious and uh, also keep track of time, it's very important. Uh, if you can wear a watch, uh, I don't think they allow smart watches, so be careful about that. Wear a watch to keep track of time and you know, think of the time that you have left in minutes, not in hours. So if, for example, you have, let's say, one hour and 30 minutes left, so think of it as 90 minutes, okay? Not one hour, 30 minutes. It just has a better impact mentally, that's why. Now remember, if it's a one mark question, then there is no working required, but anything more than one mark, you need to show all the relevant working. Like I said, don't expect the checker to do any, to understand something for you or to assume uh, any, uh, to assume that you must already know this. No, you have to get it on the question paper because that's the only way that you can communicate with the checker. Whoever checking your paper, you don't know them, they don't know you, you're not communicating with them verbally like the way we are. You have to, whatever it is, like I said, whatever it is that you're thinking here, you have to get it on the paper for the checker to know that you've basically done all the relevant working. Okay, uh, make, don't worry about, okay. So don't worry about the threshold, don't worry about the, the leaks, you know, my DMs is full of people asking me, what do you think the threshold will be? I mean, I haven't seen the paper, so what can I say about the threshold? And you know, people are sending me different papers, they're made up papers, you know, people at this point just tend to, uh, I don't know why they do it, but I think for likes and for shares, they just make some random papers and say that, oh, this is the leaked paper, this is so and so, so don't do that. You know, just focus on your own preparation. There's a quote that I always share with my students and that is, it's not exact, I mean, it's, it's not exactly what the quote is, but it, the, the idea behind is that you should at this point not rely on the, how easy or difficult the paper is going to be, but rather you should be relying on your own preparation, okay? So that's, that's basically the idea of the quote. And also, uh, those of you who have their paper 
in PM, I think everyone has their paper in PM time. So don't skip Friday namaz. Okay, I don't, especially boys, I don't recommend you do that. Uh, find your find a masjid where you can pray before the exam and uh, where, where Friday prayers are offered early and uh, make sure that it's also close to the venue. So just don't miss namaz, you know. It's, it's not a good, it's, it's Friday, Friday is a big day, so don't miss namaz, it's not a good thing to do. And uh, I'm sure, inshallah, you'll be able to make do the venue in time. So yeah, um, that's what I wanted to say. I hope I've, um, although I'm pretty sure after this video, I'll realize that there's something I've missed. But anyway, uh, I hope every piece of content that I made helped you. Uh, and inshallah, inshallah, you will be able to ace the paper and remember me, your classmates, your friends, your parents, everyone, everyone who has basically been a part of this journey with you. Remember them in your prayers and start the paper with confidence. Start the paper knowing that inshallah, inshallah, you're going to ace it and inshallah, you will. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'll see you guys inshallah in the next one. There will be streams for paper two of all levels in paper four for IGCSE. So don't worry about that. Just, uh, yeah, just, just enjoy the paper. Okay, so that's what I want to say. Just enjoy the paper. So yeah, take care, everyone. See you guys in the next one. Take care. Allah Hafiz.